we've taken derivatives so far of a function, um, and it, it's been pretty simple, but we're going to be getting into some more complicated things where we're going to be using differentials in, in, um, in some different ways, especially when we get to integral calculus. We're going to have differentials involved still. Um, and we're also going to be looking at functions where we might want to know how fast something is changing with respect to a different variable. So I want to, I want to just give you an example here. Let's say we have this circle that's centered at the origin with a radius of 5. That would, that would be this equation right here. Um, if we would want to take the derivative of this, to find the slope of this curve, this circle at any point, what would we have to do? We'd have to solve for y. Um, so if we solve for y here, we would have um, y equals the square root, actually, sorry, plus or minus the square root of 25 minus x squared, right? So this is actually two separate functions. The, the plus part is the top half of the circle. The minus part is the bottom half of the circle. And to simplify things, I'm just going to look at the top half. But understand that what I'm doing right now is just the top half of the circle. And then, what would I have to do to take the derivative? I would have to use the chain rule. So the derivative of the square root is one over two times the square root. And remember, we want to keep the baby inside. But then we have to multiply by what? The derivative of the baby, the derivative of the inside, which is negative 2x. And actually, I'm just going to put that on top of the fraction because we're multiplying by it. So we have negative 2x up here. All right, so there's your derivative. Again, remember, this is just the top half of the circle. So if we wanted the bottom half, we'd have to do this again um, with, with the negative function. Um, the 2s are going to cancel each other out. So we end up with negative x over the square root of 25 minus x squared. So if I want to know, say, the slope of the circle at the point negative 3, 4, which is on the circle, what would I do? Plug negative 3 in for x and get a slope, right? Okay, that's not terrible. It, it's, it's doable, but it's not terrible. Uh, but there, there's another way to do it. So let's say that I introduce another variable. And I'm going to show you I'm going to show you this other way twice. I'm going to show you the, the more complicated way and then a, a simpler way to do it. Um, so let's say I introduce time into this. Uh, it, it may seem silly to introduce time, but let's just say that we have parametric equations where y and x are both dependent on time. Uh, and so I'm going to take the derivative of this equation with respect to time. All right, so what I want to do is take the derivative with respect to time of the left side, x squared plus y squared, and take the derivative with respect to time of the right side. What we're going to do here is we're going to use the chain rule. Let's say that x is some function of time. Um, I'm, I'm just making something up here, but let's say x is t squared or something like that. It, just something with respect to time. So it's x that depends on time. Well, if we were going to take the derivative of this and it had um, some function of time in there for x, we would use the chain rule. We would take the derivative of the outside, right? What is the derivative of the outside function, the x squared function? 2x, but then we would have to multiply by the derivative of the inside. We would take the derivative of whatever x is with respect to x, which is going to be dx dt. So we take the derivative of the mother function, x squared, and we get 2x, times the derivative of the inside function, which is just the derivative of x with respect to time. Okay, and then we do the same thing with the other one. 
Now, once we start doing this over and over again, you're going you're gonna to understand pretty quickly what's going on. Um, so we're going to take the derivative of the outside function. This time it's a function y with respect to time. So what's the derivative of y squared with respect to time? Okay, so it's going to be 2y, but then we also have to multiply by the derivative of y, which is dy dt. Okay, and that's going to equal... What's the derivative of any constant with respect to any variable? Zero. Zero. Now, this hasn't really helped us find dy dx yet. If we want to find the slope in the coordinate plane, we want to know what dy dx is. That's our goal here. Um, one thing that you'll notice is there's no dt involved here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply everything by dt. And this is actually the step that we're going to start with. So what we actually have here is 2x dx plus 2y dy equals 0. Now what do I do to find dy dx? Any ideas? So I could do 2y dy equals 2x dx, sorry, negative 2x dx. Uh, and then if I divide by dx on both sides, I get dy dx here. So I divide by 2y over here, and so I get dy dx equals negative 2x over 2y, which is negative x over y. Now, that actually ended up being more work than the way I did it last time. So I'm going to go through it. I'm going to do it a little bit more simply, but this is kind of the idea of it. Um, but let's say I wanted to know the slope of the circle at the point negative 3, 4. What do I do? I plug in x and y. All right, so using this, what's called implicit differentiation, um, I, get, I get a derivative that's in terms of x and y, which is okay because I can figure out what x and y are and plug both of them in. So at the point negative 3, 4, I would put negative 3 in for x and 4 in for y, and the slope would be 3 fourths. Now, here's the other benefit to doing this way. I can find the slope at the point negative 3, negative 4 using this same equation. I don't have to do it again for the bottom half of the circle. Okay, this works for the top half and the bottom half. This is going to be really useful when we have relations that are written like this, especially with like a lot of our conic sections, um, or we, we're, we're going to run into some other ones too where we have x's and y's mixed together, um, and we won't have to get y by itself. We don't have to solve for y. Um, we can just, um, well, we can just take the derivative using what's called implicit differentiation. So let's go through those steps again, but I'm going to do it much more quickly here. All right, so... Well, actually, let me, let me go back real quick. I'm sorry. I wanted to mention this. Um, when, when we talked about the derivative of parametric equations, to find dy dx with parametric equations, um, how did we do that? We took what divided by what? Yeah, so dy dx is dy dt over dx dt. Let me make that one bigger. Um, and we could do that here also. I just got rid of the dt because it wasn't necessary. But what we really have here is kind of parametric equations where when we take the derivative, we could take dy or figure out what dy dt divided by dx dt was in this equation here. All right, so it's, that's the same type of thing here. Um, so if, if I were given a problem like this, we're going to use implicit differentiation in a lot of ways. Sometimes we're going to use a third variable, that dt. Sometimes we're not. In this case, we don't really need to. We can go through and we can take the derivative of this. Um, and since I want to find dy dx, I'm going to take the derivative of everything with respect to x. 
and that's going to make things a little bit easier for us. So if I take the derivative of x squared with respect to x, here, let me, let me write this down first. I want to write down my plan. So the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y squared equals the derivative with respect to x of 25. What is the derivative of, and, and you don't have to write this out. This is just what, what I'm doing in my head here. What is the derivative with respect to x of x squared? 2x. Do I have to use a chain rule here? No, because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x already. What is the derivative of y squared with respect to x? Well, it's going to be 2y, but do I have to use a chain rule? Yes, because I'm taking the derivative with respect to y, so I have to multiply by dy dx. Kind of like in the last way we did it, we multiplied by dy dt. Well, that's convenient because that's what we want to solve for, right? Um, and then over on the right side, what's the derivative of 25 with respect to x? Zero. Zero. Now, this one's a little bit easier to solve for dy dx, right? All I have to do is subtract the 2x to the other side and then divide by 2y and I get dy dx equals negative x over y. So I did another way introducing that third variable t. You can always differentiate really any, any expression with respect to any variable you want. You just have to remember to use a chain rule if it's a different variable. Okay. In this case, since we wanted to know what dy dux was to begin with, um, we, we can just start by differentiating with respect to x. It'll work if you do it with respect to a different variable, but x works just fine here, and it's a lot faster. You can see that here. If we wanted to find the slope, then at the point 3, negative 4, first of all, the first way we did it wouldn't work. Um, we would have to take the derivative of the bottom half of the circle by itself, um, because this is going to be, well, down in the fourth quadrant. Um, but using the implicit differentiation method, we can just plug it into here. So what would be the slope at 3, negative 4? Yeah, it would be 3 fourths. So if we look at a picture of this, we've got our circle with a radius of 5. So at 3, negative 4, which is going to be right about there, the slope of that tangent line is 3 fourths. This is in the book if you want to um, if you want to look it up. I, I wouldn't say you need to write this down. Um, the, the book says that if, if we have a relation in terms of x and y and we want to find dy dx, uh, these are the steps that you want to take. We're going to use implicit differentiation in a lot of different ways. It's going to look a little bit different at different times. Um, but if we want to find dy dx, we want to differentiate with respect to x. Okay, that's how we're going to get the dx in the denominator. Um, then when we do that, we get all the dy dx's on one side of the equation and, and isolate that, get, get it by itself by factoring and solving. Um, it, this is the same thing you would do to solve for any variable. Um, so I don't, I don't think you need to write this down, but this is kind of the, the general strategy for that.